Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vangam Radian here at the Association of the United States Army's 2019 Conference and Trade Show in Washington, D.C., the number one gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by General Motors Defense, Bell, L3 Harris and Leonardo DRS, and we're here at the L3 Harris stand to talk to retired United States Army Major General Jeff uh, Smith, who is the Vice President for uh, L3 Harris Communications. Sir, thanks very much for uh, joining us. Um, let's talk a little bit about the night vision uh, goggle uh, delivery. It was a big win uh, a couple of years ago, uh, or about a year and a half ago, I think it was. Uh, and talk to us about the capability that's bringing to the Army, because you guys have just made uh, first delivery of that system. Well, L3 Harris is really proud of the enhanced night vision goggle, goggle for the U.S. Army soldier. Uh, we did make the first delivery to, the, to one of the Army units, uh, and this uh, goggle is uh, the technology that soldiers have been looking for for many, many years. It's an enhanced intensifier, but it also has thermal imagery capability in the goggle. And if you can just imagine being able to look through your, your, your goggle uh, lens, uh, have reticles that can help you do navigation, have reticles that can identify within the network that you're operating, uh, friend and foe, and be able to see that on display, much like you would see in an up, uh, heads up display. Uh, the soldier's now able to, to have that capability uh, and be able to operate at night uh, with our white phosphorus capability that, that we offer with this goggle. Uh, additionally, uh, one of the things that we're really uh, pleased about, and I know the soldier and the U.S. Army is pleased about, is the ability to connect other systems that the soldier has to help be a better warfighter, things like sights or uh, lasers, you know, these systems are all going to be integrated in to the enhanced night vision goggle and give the soldier a much more capability, much more capable system to be able to operate with. And everybody knows the challenge of having night vision goggles and then using other systems with them. It's always a little bit of a challenge, uh, whether you're using them for um, while you're flying something or whether you're manipulating displays. Talk to us a little bit. You know, you said that the uh, Army is using this as sort of a core around which other systems will connect. That's one of the things you guys do. And you guys actually envision other forms of connectivity as the Army tries to move to this multi-domain battle space where uh, the battle command and management systems are a lot uh, better uh, than they are today. Talk to us about how you guys can build out that ecosystem around these night vision goggles to get the Army to where it wants to get to from a more strategic standpoint. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And one of the areas that we're working on is to be able to take ISR data capability, full motion data, and be able to downstream that through our communication systems straight into the goggle itself. So if you can imagine an ISR platform flying and over an objective or over a target that you're looking at and being able to give that feed directly into the soldier's device or his heads up uh, inside the goggle itself or on the end user device, uh, basically a little laptop computer uh, that's connected to the ensemble, uh, that's a capability that you could only do down to division and brigade level just a few years ago with ISR, and now we are bringing the capability all the way down to the individual soldier. Um, when you guys, um, you know, the, the big drive is uh, how to improve connectivity across the force uh, and in each piece of uh, the force. Uh, one of the ways that the service is trying to do that is by marrying the traditional acquisition core uh, with Futures Command and the cross-functional teams. And one of the most powerful combinations has been between Major Generals Dave Bassett and Pete Gallagher, uh, both uh, professional soldiers, uh, one with much more operational experience, the other one with um, an incredible pedigree of acquisition excellence uh, under his belt. I mean, Dave Bassett has managed to deliver so many programs on time and on budget uh, throughout his career. Uh, talk to us about how that partnership is working and how that partnership, how, how you guys are working with that partnership uh, in one of the most exciting and important portfolios the Army has. Well, L3 Harris has been a mission partner with the U.S. Army for decades, and one of the valuable things that we see in the organization that the Army is designing with the Army Futures Command and the alignment of the Army priorities and then action to get it done, I think we're seeing in spades with people like General Bassett and General Gallagher. We work with them every single day or members of their team every single day. And the teamwork that they display, bringing requirements, uh, experimentation to the table, bringing the industry into those experimentations and spiraling out of that in a much quicker cycle to acquisition and procurement I think is one of the true values that we see in a teaming effort uh, with General Bassett and General Gallagher. And then the connection that they have to Army Futures Command where, we're, where you're looking 
deeply into the future, so it's it's not just uh, today's technology, it's also tomorrow's technology and leap ahead technology, and being involved in that open funnel, if you will, during the development cycles and being with our partner continuously understanding what the requirements are and then letting them try new equipment, new technologies, and then spiral that into some kind of procurement cycle. We've seen it uh, work very well between General Bassing and General Gallagher on the communication network side. Um, the uh, Army has been, uh, each of the services has been pushing to be able to accelerate acquisition cycles, field equipment more quickly. Um, but they are also asking increasingly for companies to put skin in the game at the end of the day. Uh, I'm not going to talk to you specifically about the helicopter uh, competition in terms of the FARA, the future, uh, the uh, attack reconnaissance uh, aircraft, uh, which you, uh, AVX, you guys are teamed with on that. Uh, Boeing and Sikorsky are teamed, and then Bell obviously has a team uh, of its own. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, at, at the end of the day, I mean, I covered the network integration exercises for a long period of time. There wasn't, you know, companies were investing to bring capability. I know that Legacy Harris was doing that, Legacy L3 was doing it. But at some point, you know, every one of the contractors was saying, hey, we need to get something out of this at the, at the end of the day. And now, uh, again, the Army is asking for you guys to make investment. I, is that, you know, how do you guys feel about that at a corporate level when so many different arms of the Army are asking you to make investment in capability without really any surety at all whether or not you guys are going to be winning any of, of, of that work. You know, if you can give us kind of a little bit of a philosophical take on some of the conversations you're having with Dr. Jetty, the Army Acquisition Chief, and others about sort of the right way to posture this to sort of get the speed, but also have your equities because you're all shareholder traded companies. Yeah, look, I think the, uh, the important thing to recognize here is, you know, America's defense is not just done by the Department of Defense. It's, it's a national effort, and the industry has always been a part of that. And one of the things that, that, that we're seeing in this respect is that industry does have to come forward, and they do have to put skin in the game. L3 Harris has done that in spades. If you just take a look at the communication systems and the new radios that the Army is procuring for the integrated tactical network, that, in most part, was developed with L3 Harris funds. Uh, we put skin in the game. We developed capabilities and we showed the Army, in this case, what those capabilities can do. And now we're part of very big programs uh, for the integrated tactical network. So we think it's very important. You can, you're going to get technology at a much, fast, much faster pace. Uh, you're going to get companies that, that, uh, that have a, a lot of capability to be able to do that. And if you have the right partnership, then I think the expectation would be that there might be procurement opportunities in the future. So. There's risk involved in this, but certainly uh, as a mission partner with very important customer, Department of Defense and Department of Army, we feel that we have to do that. And uh, last question, three months into uh, the merger, uh, what should we uh, expect to see next uh, from the company, right? I mean, you guys, uh, you know, everybody uh, now knows where everybody else's desk is uh, pretty much. So what should we expect next from the company, especially on the communication side of things where you guys have been uh, very dynamic for a very long period of time? Well, I think there's a lot uh, to look forward to. I mean, L3 Harris combination is is an amazing company, and we we are already seeing synergies that are going to be value added for the Army. Uh, they're going to be value added for L3 Harris uh, synergies like we just talked about, where you have the enhanced eye vision goggle. But part of what makes all that work is the network and the radio systems that are part of that network, and that's where you had two companies come together with some very unique capabilities. Uh, that, that can deliver a much better capability and an end-to-end -end solution. So one of the things that, that we like to uh, talk about is you know, L3 Harris is going to provide end-to-end -end solutions against mission-critical systems and requirements uh, that the Army uh, is doing. You see this on the air side as well. When you think about uh, attack helicopters or troop care and helicopters and the ability uh, for air crew to be able to talk air-to-air, -air, uh, or air to ground, uh, L3 Harris has air to air data link capabilities and air to ground data link capabilities that we now can integrate into the ground systems uh, that L3 Harris has. So you, know, you really have a full suite uh, just on the communication and uh, air side, and as we talked about earlier, the individual soldier and the fire control side, uh, and being able to get uh, ISR data links down uh, to the individual soldier is, is an amazing achievement, and uh, literally overnight we can bring that uh, capability together now.
Major General Jeff Smith, uh, retired United States Army, who's now the Vice President at Harris uh, at L3 Harris Communications. Sir, thanks very much. Uh, best of luck, and look forward to talking to you again soon, well, thank sir. You thanks. Thank you for coming by. We appreciate it.